Hey, what's going on, friends? Family, my name is Skylint. We're talking about Hyperscape. You might have just heard about this because yesterday it dropped. Streamers were playing it. You have a chance to actually get into the game by watching the streamers. And then at the same time, this is Ubisoft. So it's a big company, big publishing, and just instantaneously they're like, hey, here's a game. And it's like really radical. In fact, it reminds me a lot uh, with so many notes from other failed battle royales, such as Radical Heights, uh, moving on, maybe even the Darwin Project with a Twitch integration, and uh, many, many others, like some failed hero shooter uh, battle royales. But at the same time, it also has notes from successes too, such as Apex, as well as looking at what some other genres kind of um, kind of have been missing. Like we, we haven't really had an arena shooter uh, popular in a very long time. And we kind of been getting that feel a little bit ish when it comes to something maybe like Apex, but Hyperscape is really like, hey, uh, we're gonna be like the Unreal Tournament of Battle Royales. That literally the weapon design and the physics and a lot of the gameplay reminds me so much of Unreal Tournament, especially because it's not mixed combat with vehicles and stuff like that, but you do have kind of slower, crawling, more indoors kind of combat. And then you're like on the rooftops, jumping around, flying around. You'll be doing like matrix scenes where you're like going from building to building and stuff. It's pretty wild. With also, you're gonna have some special abilities too. Visibility. Uh, you got your jump pads. It is it is going to be a little bit, I think, the word hype. It's going to just have a lot of energy. And at the same time, another gimmick of the game is that it's all urban. Uh, and there's some really interesting technology that we'll kind of ramble on, but I just kind of wanted to spit out, hey, this is what Hyperscape is. It's got this like synth wave, virtual reality kind of vibe to it. Um, at the same time, it's going to feel kind of like an arena shooter. And at the same time, it also has all these trendy uh, topics like Twitch integration, and it is a battle royale. So hopefully it can pierce through the giant tidal wave of search engine optimization when it comes to battle royales and ride on top and not be a washed up, uh, you know, um, version of this genre, which happens so many times. But even in those washed up games, I think we all had fun. You know, even in the worst of the worst games, like, I don't know, like Cliff Blazinski's Battle Royale, right? Radical Heights, Darwin Project. Sure, you know, there, there's something special in a lot of these games. And I think this game is just taking everything that it possibly can to fill in the cracks of the genre, as well as kind of pad on to its resume of what it's trying to be. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to compete pretty well overall. Now, if you guys want to play, okay, uh, you can actually start watching streams, uh, yesterday at like 9 AM. Uh, so July 2nd, it started, you know, allowing streamers to check it out. Um, they're playing it. I was watching myth. He was doing pretty fantastically and was really showing off some pretty high skill ceiling gameplay for hyperscape. I was like, what? Okay. I'm in I'm interested. Let's do it. I was just going to talk about the game, but now I'm like legitimately like, I want to play the game. I really loved Apex a tremendous amount. And I think we can just see that, you know what? Maybe there's no such thing as genre saturation. There's infinite human creativity and we can always do more and better. Especially there is one thing that I do want to shout out Hyperscape in their developer promotion trailer, not really a devlog thing, but the developers were saying stuff and things. They were saying that they do want to have multiple game modes. They're going to continuously update this game and do a lot with it. And what we've seen with Fortnite and Apex, Apex, that definitely seems to be the future. It's not just slapping down a game and then just adding skins constantly. It's making a true games as a service or making it like a living world. Like there's new events, there's actually new game modes and you know, little limited time things, maybe concerts, who knows? They didn't say concerts specifically, but that is the future of game design. I think Hyperscape uh, is really on that trend because really this game overall is like trending the game. Okay, so, you know, it's like Synthwave, you know, Cyberpunk, Battle Royale, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got it, it's got it, and I, at the same time, I, I really do love that they, they added the twist by making it feel like an arena shooter, that's gonna be big, uh, it's gonna be kind of a, a little bit of a stake in the heart for uh, classic arena shooters that are coming out like Diabotical, but I gotta say one thing, guys, moving forward. I'm so excited for this game because when I played arena shooters, historically, what I loved really the most was, I just really love big team battle because of the hecticness. If I was playing Halo or something like that, but if I was playing generally, it's still free for all. I, I just love free for all. I love free for all. And if I played Quake or Unreal or any other just like classic arena shooter, like and it was free for all. I loved free for all. And in fact, whenever I played games like Halo or Far Cry, we would make the battle royale game modes. We would play battle royales. Battle royale isn't a new genre. We used to do this in these kind of games for a really long time. So Hyperscape is it's kind of bringing it back, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to definitely a new sci-fi shooter. And um, this kind of came out of nowhere, honestly. And of course, it's kind of part of the marketing ploy. 
But anyways, diving in a little bit deeper, what are these guns going to look like? What are these abilities going to be like? How is this gameplay loop going to really work? I'm sure, you know, the, the gameplay does speak for itself, and I often expect that you guys can do a little bit of research, you know, watch the trailers yourself, and as well, see the gameplay yourself. You got eyeballs, but let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper. All right, so more nuance. Hyperscape, specifically, it's free to play. Nice. It is fast paced. It is sci fi, though that particular brand is is actually very Ubisoft, kind of a mix of what they've been doing with Assassin's Creed and, and Watch Dogs. Multiplayer battle royale shooter set in a virtual reality world of the same name, Hyperscape. So basically, when I first saw this game, I was like, wow, this this looks like so gimmicky. This is this is like gimmick the battle royale. Um, this looks like if you there's certain animes and certain shows where it's like there's a gamer character and it shows them playing a game. That game is totally hyperscape. You know, it's like it's such a gamey gamery game. And uh, at the same time, I am so into that. Uh, it's cheesy, but I think I'm living it. So 99 players, even though with its speed, with all of its chaos and, and quite in insanity, it's actually still 99 players in an urban environment. That's crazy. They descend onto the map of Neo Arcadia, though we might have more maps later, either solo or in teams of three, so three players just like Apex, to compete in a Crown Rush game mode. This is going to be kind of similar to Ring of Elysium, where you can actually get on a helicopter to win or be the last one standing. There is an option to go for the objective, which is hold the crown probably for a certain amount of time or get the most kills, which, yeah, Crown Rush is the most popular game in Hyperscape. I don't know if they're saying that Hyperscape is like supposed to be like this sort of MMO virtual reality in the lore, but Crown Rush is the game mode so far in Hyperscape. The game's technical test is right now it's live on PC, meaning that you can tune in to watch all the different founders live streams right now and you get a drop rate. Uh, who knows what it's going to be, but it's, it's really just like Valorant. Founders are streamers and content creators granted access to the test. I am sadly not one of them, friends and family. So watching their streams makes you eligible to earn drops, have a chance to participate in the Hyperscape technical test, which lasts about a week. Hyperscape introduces a number of features to the Battle Royale genre, they state. So we're going to go down into the dirty and it all starts with the dense, entirely urban map of Neo Arcadia. Speed and verticality are crucial in the streets, courtyards and multi-story buildings of Hyperscape. So I want to actually talk about that. This iteration of map design is very controversial. If you've ever played in the cities of something like Battlefield, often it's it's kind of just a clustered luck. It's it's not too fun all the time. But in Battle Royales, the the chaos and the insanity, the unfairness, the unjustness of it all is kind of also a part of it. So PUBG has a very particular design. And then you, when you go into Fortnite and stuff, um, you know, that has a particular design and people enjoy camping in certain areas. But, you know, dro dropping into the city areas is, is always like it's very hit or miss and it's very chance based. Uh, however, this game with its sound design, with its speed, with its power and overall um, with some of its gimmicks of how the map actually shrinks and dissolves, I think makes a lot of sense. And I do think that there are type of player who you know, for the most part, Battle Royale games do have a lot of empty space, especially games like Apex. It is very open and it does seem very fair and balanced in a certain way. But there is a love to be had with, you know, dropping down in school, right? In PUBG or, you know, drop down city, uh, Fortnite, stuff like that. Dropping down into these really dense areas. There's a certain type of player that really enjoys that. And Hyperscape is like, OK, those kind of players, let's go again. Very, very smart that they decided to do that. Some game designers would be like, oh, you can't you can't just do that. That's way too much noise, way too much information with 99 players. But I think it can actually be balanced and I think it can be created in such a way that it is genuinely fun. And either way, even if it is just a cluster fluck, some people really just want that. So, yeah, you are going to have to stay on your toes, make smart use of your weapons and unique abilities. So these abilities in the game, they're called hacks and they can dramatically alter your playstyle by allowing you to do things like teleport, turn invisible, heal yourself and your allies. Uh, leap into the air massively uh, or come crashing down on your enemies and a, a lot more. It's it's going to be ridiculous and they're going to add more hacks, more weapons, more weird stuff all the time. So as matches progress, you're going to upgrade your weapons. You're going to upgrade your hacks. And this is the, the key thing that I love about it. And it's something that they kind of probably learned from Realm Royale, actually. Again, see lots of notes from all these kind of failed battle royales that they're bringing to life. And by picking up duplicate copies of weapons, you fuse them together to turn them into the more powerful iteration. So you find an SMG, find a second SMG. Now you have a level two 
SMG, I believe up to five times. Yeah, so Realm Royale kind of did it where you were able to like cash in old stuff for a currency and then transform things and get better and better. That way it kind of evened out the randomness while still allowing you to have that card draw mechanic. It's almost like mulligans in a way. Uh, so this allows you to be, it just, just allows you to be better more often and more ready for most situations while again, still having that element of randomness and looting and searching and fighting. In hyperspace, Death is not the end of the game, actually. Players who are eliminated become Echoes. So I saw Myth do this and I was like, what? This is weird. But actually, I think I'm totally hyped with it. Let's get broken here. This whole game's about just being broken and OP. Let's do it. So basically, active participants who can still move, you can move your ghost. You can move through the map and you can actually find enemies. You become a scout. So the game is not over. You can still actually play around it. And scouting is going to be huge. And in fact, I wonder, I wonder, it might even be that that's such a, a, a strong thing to have. Um, would people just kill themselves for that? You know, because you're an invincible like security camera, basically. You can just run around and do anything. Weapons and locations, you can actually ping as well. You can just walk around, ping everything for the surviving teammates. That's 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 powerful. And I think that's going to be uh, allow a lot of people who normally could not compete in this kind of game to still be able to play and still be able to be of use, even if you're just good at parkouring. In fact, we should elaborate on that later. Anyways, eliminating enemy players does create a restore point at the location they went down. So if you kill someone and if you want to bring someone back, you can just uh, go to that spot, restore them. Or if somebody else died somewhere else and it wasn't used as a restore point, you can use that as well. So you basically this game is, is probably going to go on for a really long time. If it's teams of three and it's 99 players and everyone is like ghosts and pinpointing people and people are dying more often or more regularly, possibly. Uh, but at the same time, they're being restored regularly. Ah, man, I, I don't know how that is going to balance out in the end, but it is something very exciting. I mean, reviving players in a battle royale is something very dubious, um, but it worked fantastically in Apex. And I love the fact that this is so uh, team focused Yeah, in a lot of games in older battle royales. Once you lose a teammate, you almost are guaranteed to lose. It reduces your chances of winning dramatically. So this sort of thing where it's like it, you win as a team or you lose as a team, that is way more fun in my opinion of course evening out again the absolute randomness so yeah if you survive long enough to be one of the last squads standing you'll enter what's known as the showdown phase at this point a crown spawns somewhere on the map and players can win the match in one of two ways obviously you eliminate all the other players that's it or you can capture the crown you gotta hold it for 45 seconds. And about a royale, 45 seconds is long as balls, especially with this much intensity, this much action. You're not just camping, you know, you're not just building a fort around you. You're not just hiding in some corner of the map, you know, behind three trees or whatever in a couple bushes. You're yeah, it's a city, but you're you're gonna be moving and running. It's it's gonna be like Trinity in the in the Matrix, you know. It's, oh my god, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I, I really think so. But keep that in mind when you're holding the crown, your location. Obviously, it's going to be pinged to everyone. Everyone's going to know it. Hey, that guy has the crown. We got to kill that dude. We got 45 seconds. Let's go. So that's going to create that's going to create some mind games for sure. And of course, partnering with Twitch, all the, you know, the Twitch extension uh, thing that oh, man, that's going to be something wild. Let's talk about that. So in other games, it's really unbalanced. It's really uh, it's fun, but it's really just like a party game kind of thing. And Battle Royales totally can be party games. But Hyperscape uh, it seems like it's it's really just more kind of a replacement of uh, a random generator thing, like a weather effect of some sorts. So there's a new Twitch extension that you can have called Crowncast, and Crowncast allows viewers to impact matches in real time by voting on in-game events that affect all players, like turning on low gravity or giving everyone the ability to triple jump. Uh, you know, just completely break the game. Why not? And, you know, obviously very inspired by Hunger Games, which Hunger Games is a spectator sport, makes sense this game is and if you watch the dev diary whatever trailer thing promotion it is very much like hey we're making a game entirely from the perspective of well people people who are just watching the viewers viewers can also earn game rewards by just watching too uh so just another way to kind of fatten up those twitch numbers and streamers can invite viewers to party up with them all through the little app that's actually really cool I'm going to be taking use of that. Uh, sometimes when I play games, like recently Guild Wars 2, is really weird trying to party up with you guys. Uh, sometimes, you know, you got to go into these lobbies or add as friends first, and you have to go through all these menus and bullshit. But it's really cool that, you know, this kind of just works through this app and it's integrated in Twitch and we can just play together. 
Awesome. Fantastic. Cool. <laughs> Anyways, so what's going to really separate Hyperscape from other games in the genre? It's going to be the feel. It's going to be the general feel. And it's going to be basically, I think, if Apex was kind of like a Titanfall, you know, Battle Royale, Fortnite obviously is its own beast of a game. PUBG is kind of like an Arma Battle Royale. There's certain kind of flavors and notes here and there for the different Battle Royales. This one is like Unreal Tournament. And you might say, well, that, that does kind of seem like Apex. And this game does have sliding. It is going to be very parkour oriented. It is going to be very vertical, but it's more like Apex, except like kind of on cocaine constantly all the time. It's, it's hyped up Apex. And that could be good, that could be bad. And Apex itself is already a pretty freaking hype game. Don't get me wrong. This one's just a little bit extra and more. Just like, you know, Battlefield was actually pretty arcade, but Call of Duty was like, hold hold my Mountain Dew, bro. And my Doritos, here we go. So it's just, it's a little bit extra. Now, is it too much? We, I guess we'll find out in the end. You know, I'm not here to do a hardcore review or anything like this. This is just a preview. This is me just talking about it. <laughs> but... It is something that's very exciting to me as someone who just likes really bombastic stuff. This game actually in many ways reminds me of a, a few, uh, I guess, arena shooter inspired games such as Lawbreakers, which was not a technical arena shooter, but had some similar vibes and feels. There's a lot of moments where it's going to feel just like Lawbreakers and no other game felt like Lawbreakers for better or worse. And that game failed for reasons. But again, I love that they're taking all these ideas, which were good ideas. There was some really cool concepts in a lot of these different games and they're bringing it together in a genre that you would think was oversaturated, but actually it wasn't. I don't, I don't, I think this game is going to find its place. Now diving a little bit deeper into the nuance, if you guys are still watching and still very interested in the little details of this battle royale and how it compares to others. Oh, uh, there is one thing that I would like to mention, and that's going to be the weapon loadouts. You might have noticed that there's actually not that many weapons in the game from the gameplay. It's, it's actually more like, instead of having six assault rifles, they actually specifically say this example. It's just one singular assault rifle. There is a minigun, there is a shotgun. And it seems like, again, that's very unreal or arena shooter kind of mentality where you just have one of kind of every type of weapon and those weapons are actually really in depth. But this game is also offsetting a little bit of that depth with abilities and kind of creating your own, well, from the hacks, uh, sort of your own kit. Like if you want to be kind of like a, a run and gun, invisible, uh, you know, close quarters combat kind of person, then you're going to want to have slap on the shotgun as well. Also, yes, just to reiterate, if it wasn't clear, the hacks in the game are broken. They are a lot of very powerful abilities where you are going to be dashing, blinking. You're going to be going invisible and leaping a, a lot of insane stuff. And not just every once in a while, like all the time. It is going to be an incredibly hyperactive game. Very similar to Lawbreakers or classic arena shooters where you don't stop moving. That's going to be this game, even in fast games like Apex. This game is going to trump that. It might, I might even say, like, from watching footage, double that. And, of course, with the complexity of being in an urban environment, again, with all these abilities, oh, oh boy. Oh, and one thing that we haven't mentioned so far is actually how the ring works in this game. Something that I think looks gorgeous. And, by the way, I think the game does look amazing, uh, and as well the aesthetic just in general. But the way that the ring uh, operates and how that looks is kind of just an extra level thing. And, as well, the game apparently is very optimized. Um, that's just kind of what they're claiming. They're like, oh, yeah, no, we have, like, this very unique engine that, especially suited for this other Battle Royale games, wouldn't be able to do this kind of environment. But one thing that I think really works in their favor is that they slowly deteriorate the map. Now, I've played some weird Battle Royales. Uh, like totally accurate battle royale simulator or battleground simulator where there's like a literal giant wall that crushes you as it you know encloses the map that's neat this game um deletes the world it's almost like the, the world is kind of like fragmenting uh, around you or it's kind of corrupting and so the world literally falls apart behind you as you have to get closer and closer which also means as the fights become more intense and more regular um that the, i guess the performance is evened out and everyone is actually put together I really appreciate just again how it looks you guys might be able to see it um there's like these little triangles kind of like these little black kind of graphic that sort of just creeps over the textures and then the world falls apart so it's not like a fog of war or a, a electric storm or anything like that the world just literally disappears behind you so neat awesome thumbs up for that one but yeah talking about the lore what's going on it's near future 2054 earth everyone lives in mega cities stuff like that world's far from perfect it seems like there's actually going to be maybe probably like a story that's told maybe through events 
They've got like Prisma Dimensions is this company that invented something called the B-Link and we're totally sword art online, but with a battle rate. Wait, is this Gun Gale online? Anyways, so um, yeah, it's it's a VR headset. You link up, it's virtual reality, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a lot of different um, things you can do with this virtual reality, such as shopping. You can watch movies, blah, blah. You can also play this game. And Hyperscape is one that happens. Okay, so the issue thing here is that there's something mysterious going on specifically inside of Hyperscape in this virtual reality thing. Uh, people are there as characters for different reasons, and some characters are there to compete, be the best at the most popular game, Crown Rush, and others are there to investigate what's going on. Um, so I don't know how that story is going to be exactly be told, if there's going to be comics or what have you, probably in-game events of some kind. Um, they're probably going to do environmental storytelling with skins, things like that. Very Fortnite inspired, I am sure. But yeah, that's going to be what's going to go down. Uh, of course, with those seasons, those updates and the, the story progression, what, what kind of content are we going to get? And they say each new season has, at minimum, one new ability or hack and one new weapon. And again, remember, the weapons in this game are a little bit substantial. It's not just like another, you know, assault rifle. It's, it's going to be something pretty big that's going to change the game. Also, there's going to be three or four limited time different modes. So immediately they're thinking ahead. A lot of people really love the different gimmick modes uh, from, you know, Fortnite. So it's going to be stuff like that. One they already have planned is called Dark Haze, as an example. There's also one called Turbo Mode, uh, in which case all the weapons and hacks are fully fused from the start. So you're just instantaneously end game. Let's go, boys. And each season also is going to feature a new free battle pass as well. And yeah, battle pass, battle pass, not that unique, not that interesting. But at the same time, it's an incredibly fair system overall. And basically everyone loves it ever since Dota pioneered it. Basically, everyone loves it. So there it is. That's a much better alternative than buying for DLCs or having pay to win mechanics as well. And the, the battle pass is going to be full of things like characters, uh, that's the skins, weapons, uh, and pod skins. So you actually drop down in pods, different pod skins, much like having different gliders, and probably a ton more. There's also a shop that gets refreshed daily. I don't like that. I don't like the fear of missing out. Um, that's something that's a little bit manipulative. But again, compared to the alternative of being pay to win and stuff like that, you can't really complain too much, I guess. Anyways, so yeah, basically they're like, yeah, Fortnite did a good monetization. We're just we're just going to copy it because honestly, it is incredibly fair. The game is competitive. It is literally balanced and there is nothing you can really complain about in terms of it perverting the gameplay. But you can talk about how, you know, even though there's no loot boxes, you know, the rotating store is like, ah, well, that's kind of a gray area. You can't say it's bad. You can't say it's good. It's not great. But, you know, it's it's somewhere in the middle where you definitely could create a debate for it. It is manipulative to an extent, but at the same time, it doesn't actually hurt the game or really anyone uh, unless they actually have an issue with addiction. Anyways, guys, I think that's really all of the surface level information that I can just kind of shout out there and give out. And I think lastly, just one more time to reiterate on Hyperscape. I am interested. I will play it. I've actually been historically pretty good. I've been in a couple of montages when it came to Fortnite. I had fun with Apex a lot. Um, but I never really stuck hard with any one of them because my gimmick was always playing new games and doing new things, but I guess it's time to find a, a main game, and Valorant was really slow for me, so Hyperscape, hey, keep the hype alive is my motto, that might be my jam. Anyways, I am looking forward to this, and also, even if this wasn't a game that I was personally biased to want to play, it's been a long time since we've played a game like this, in terms of, like, the feel. Last one was probably Lawbreakers. There's been a few arena shooters that have completely failed and I'm looking forward to Diabotical, but it's been a while since I've had this type of gameplay feel. And I think a lot of you guys as well. Oh, and one game that this game actually reminds me a lot of sometimes, um, especially with the blue plate specials, is gonna be Tribes Ascend. That's basically when you shoot a projectile and hit someone midair, you know, midair rockets and stuff like that. That's gonna happen in this game. Obviously, still interiors, still gonna be running around in streets, but you will have a mix of gameplay from gameplay feel of Tribes Ascend to Unreal Tournament to, of course, PUBG camping sort of scenarios where you get a rush a corner. I really think that's going to be very refreshing. And yeah, uh, obviously I'm into the cyberpunk synthwave VR kind of aesthetic, much like you. It's very trendy. It's going to work well with search engine optimization, I'm sure. A lot of people, this is a very market tested kind of game. But at the same time, dude, I think I'm totally a part of that market. So what do you guys think in the comments below? Let me know. Like, subscribe, all the cool YouTube stuff. And thanks so much for supporting me on Patreon. The donations help me spend time to actually play these games uh, and go more in depth with them. Past the preview, of course. So yeah, all I can ask is you keep the hype alive. My name is Skylint, and I will see you again next time.